Welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and get started today. Thank you for attending our training. Our topic is Strategic Planning 101 and my name is Connie Armstrong and I'll be presenting today's training. M3, excuse me, M3 Planning is the parent company that developed my strategic plan. It's our web-based application that all types of organizations from large to small to nonprofit, for-profit, and even churches use to develop and manage their strategic plans. With that in mind, a little bit more about us here at M3 Planning so you know who we are and what we're so passionate about. Uh, M3 Planning, like I said, developed and manages my strategic plan, but we also have my nonprofit plan and my church plan. And for discussion purposes today, I will be referring to my strategic plan, but if you are a user of one of the other systems or if you're interested in any of the other systems, uh, just keep that in mind and know that they are all similar in nature. Uh, in addition, in the past few years, M3 has worked with uh, quite a few uh, strategic um, planning processes and deployed lots of strategic management systems. We've worked with uh, lots of uh, executives, managers, and boards to help them build consensus and commitment amongst themselves for their strategic plan. And uh, Erica Olson, our COO and co-founder, has authored the Strategic Planning Kit for Dummies. This is the second edition and it includes a great resource CD that you can use in developing your strategic plan. It has a lot of additional worksheets and such um, that you can utilize. And Erica, as well as many of our other team members, have put together some great training w uh, videos using Whiteboard um, to uh, illustrate uh, different elements of strategic planning, uh, such as how to develop mission statements, how to determine competitive advantages, how to execute against your plan, um, how to set goals and such like that. So all of those uh, videos are available on our website uh, through a link through the resources page. So keep an eye out for those and I think you'll find them very useful. They're only about three to five minutes in length, so nice and short and sweet. So please look for those. And uh, M3 Planning, uh, our team often does stri uh, strategic plan facilitations with organizations and companies. Uh, we help them in developing uh, their strategic plans and setting those goals and such. So um, we really enjoy engaging with customers on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And if you're uh, possibly in need of such assistance as well, please give us a call. We'd love to uh, chat with you about that. Now let's go ahead. We're going to review our agenda so you have an idea of what we will be covering today. We'll be spending about the next 45 minutes and I'll be going through the elements of a strategic plan. We'll start off with how and why having that strategic plan is so critical to an organization's sustainability. I'll talk about the key elements of a strategic plan and then the process and the schedule to developing that plan. I'll then talk about the top five most important guidelines in your planning efforts. And I will round out today's session with some tips and tricks to using my strategic plan. If you do have any questions at any point, please enter them into the chat box and I will get to those as soon as I uh, can or at the end of the presentation as I will have Q&As um, at the end as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So in today's day, it's all about staying viable and being vibrant in this business world that we live in, and it's um, making sure that we are being sustainable and that we're sticking to that core uh, during these uh, economic times that are so challenging. So let's talk about why having that strategic plan is so critical. This next slide, it demonstrates the strategic planning process. A is where you are right now, and B is where you want to be in the future. So some take the long winding path up here on the top, and although they do eventually make it here to uh, point B, it is going to take some extra time and resources as they're circling around, and it's probably going to be a little frustrating as along the way you're going to be wondering where you're at, if you're on the right track, what you're doing. Um, you're going to be um, off in the weeds and wondering if you're ever going to hit that point B, what you set out for your organization. And then some other folks take this path down here on the bottom and very jig-jagged and as you can see, unfortunately, they, they never meet up here with this point B 
as they get sidetracked and off course. Uh, and that's because they don't have a clear picture of where they should be going, and so every day they get a little bit more and more off track. But with the strategic management process, you can take the most direct path here from point A up to point B. Along the way during this process, you're going to be aligning your resources and your time and your money, and you're going to be efficient throughout the whole process. Um, but in order to do that, you're going to need to make sure that this path that you have set to get from point A to point B is clearly defined to yourself and the whole team, and it's articulated to everybody involved. As you do move along this uh, path or through this process, um, it is important, make sure you're taking a step back from time to time and you're making sure that you're still on that articulated path that you've mapped out so that you know that you're still heading in the right direction. There are going to be some bumps in the road as that's obviously just life, but that strategic plan is going to give you the most direct path to helping you reach your goals, helping you be efficient and effective throughout the process. Now, strategic planning, it's also about determining why you exist as an organization. So we often refer to it as defining what's in and what's out of your organization, and we've got that here delineated by this box. Now, we think of this box as a guideline that's going to help us in our planning process. I always say people hate to be boxed in, probably, but this box, as I say, it's a positive thing and it's a guideline that's going to help us, um, again, reach that point B that we've set for our group. Now, strategic planning, it's about making clear choices of what we should do or what we should not do um, based on what either works or what doesn't work for the group. Now, if you're um, working through your day-to-day -day and you're presented with a task and somebody asks you to uh, accomplish the task, ask yourself if it fits within your box. Because if it doesn't, don't do it. It's probably going to get you off track and way out here. Um, but if it does keep, if it does work with, um, with you and for you, then perform the task, and that's going to help you get along here again from point A to point B. So make sure you're determining what works for your organization and then what doesn't work. Keep those things outside of the box here and uh, they won't bog you down. Obviously then your core, your mission, um, that's all your foundation, that's where um, you should be going. That's all here within the box. Now let's talk about uh, what strategic planning means, and it does, um, there are different levels, um, and it does mean different things to different people. So let's go ahead and discuss those. Um, quite often, um, as groups venture into this process, um, everyone has their own vision of the process. Um, it is important to make sure that as you um, do venture into your strategic management process, Make sure, again, you're bringing clarity uh, to your group of what your specific process is going to be so that you're all on the same page and working toward a unified goal. Um, like I said, as you can see here, there are differing, le differing levels of planning, and make sure that everybody has um, the intentions to work within that same level. Um, after I do move through the discussion of these four levels, make sure you ask yourself, which level are you or your organization seeking to achieve? Um, as I always say, it doesn't have to be a competition. You don't have to get to level four. Make sure you're just doing what's comfortable for your organization. Um, if you start out at level one with the first year, great. You can move on to level two in subsequent years and on down to level three and four after that. So again, make sure you're doing what's comfortable for you so that your planning process remains on the front burner, and there is some execution against it. Now, level one here is an articulated plan, and it's the base or the core of strategic planning. Uh, it is just an articulated plan, and it includes your mission and vision, some goals, your actions, and your key performance indicators, or those KPIs. And this level of planning is going to last for about two to three years. This next level here, is strategic differentiation. Now, the second level is the base of um, 
uh, level one, plus it includes strategy to help you reach your vision. Now that includes the research element so that you know where you stand within your environment. We always encourage our um, uh, companies, clients that we work with, make sure that they talk to their employees and their customers and see what they have to say before they make any decisions about where they want to go, how they're going to get there. Make sure you're checking out the competition. Um, your goal here then is to determine what makes you different from your competition. And then you can use that unique value proposition to deliver your product or your service to your customers. Level three here is organizational engagement, and it obviously then goes a little bit deeper and it builds on the first two levels. Now here is where you're going to engage the organization into the whole planning process. Uh, think about who and when and how you're going to bring them into the plan, and we often refer to this as a governance process. We determine who's doing what, we emphasize the accountability of what needs to be done and the commitment that's necessary for this level of planning to work for an organization as it takes a team to get to that point B. Level four here is called organizational transformation. Now this is doing all of the above, plus you're going to commit to transforming the organization as you're going to be executing against your plan. Uh, you'll be determining how often you're going to commit to this uh, review process and such. Uh, your goals are going to be updated as they're performed or reached. Um, but you need to determine whether you want to meet monthly for your reviews, maybe quarterly, uh, and the time allotment as well. So during this uh, level of planning, you will be answering all of these types of questions. So just to wrap up this slide here, uh, know which level that you're seeking to achieve so that you know how wide and how deep you need to go so that you can make sure that you get there. Now to continue on to the next agenda item, let's talk about what the key elements of a strategic plan are and how it's organized. This is obviously a question that we do get asked quite a bit. And before I get into the details here, I want to make sure that I do point out that, again, be clear in all of these elements here. Um, we've got these elements listed here in this slide, and we are always, always try to be concise on what we call them. So make sure that you do the same amongst your group in your organization. Uh, some folks do refer to strategic objectives as strategic priorities, and that's okay, maybe vice versa. Um, it doesn't matter what you actually do call them. It, what matters is that you're consistent on what you call them so that you're avoiding confusion amongst the group. Uh, for today, I will be using these terms. And in our My Strategic Plan system, you can actually customize these terms so that you can utilize what your group is most familiar with. And I'll show you where and how to do that when I jump into the system here toward the end of the session. So let's start here at the top of the pyramid, and we'll talk about your vision. Now this is your peak of the mountain, and it's the where. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in three to five years? Next, we've got our mission and values. Now this is our core ideology, and it does ask the question, why? Why do we want to be the best uh, cupcake maker in the uh, city, maybe even, you know, area. Uh, why are we doing what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? Why do we keep coming to work every day? Next, we've got our uh, long-term strategic objectives and strategies. Now, this is our what. What are we going to do within that next three to five year time frame that's going to help us reach that top level vision? Very important there. Then we've got our annual organization-wide goals. Now these goals that are set have measures and targets, and they always answer that question of what are you going to accomplish on an annual basis? What's the outcome going to be that's going to help you reach your goal? Next, we've got the department goal level. This is a how. 
How are you going to accomplish your goals at the department level? What's the output going to be? And then again here at the individual level for goals and actions, how are you going to accomplish these goals at this level? Um, obviously these last two levels of department and individuals are tactical items that are going to help us reach that top of the pyramid up here, our vision. Um, also just keep in mind our system does work to link these big goals here uh, to these individual action plans. Uh, it is built so that it can um, so that you can easily break your goals out into easily followable tasks so that those goals become actually more achievable. Um, and to quickly point out, we do have another training session that does focus exclusively on setting strategic objectives and cascading those goals down into actionable items. And if you haven't uh, signed up for that one or listened to it yet, our recording online, I encourage you to do so. It's got a lot of great information in helping you uh, set those goals and cascade them down. So next, let's go ahead and um, talk about the schedule and the process to developing your strategic plan. And here is our um, virtual strategy guide. This is an overview of our six-step strategic planning process and the flow between them. Uh, we did develop this uh, a while ago, and it's our process map. Again, we call it our virtual strategy guide. And I'm going to start out at a high level here in discussing uh, the details of this slide, and then I'm going to discuss each of the specific phases a little bit more in detail here in a minute. Um, we'll talk about the different time frames for each phase, but this whole process for phases one through five here uh, should take about three months to get through. And then phase six here is the execution of your plan, and that is going to obviously then be comprised of the following months of the year as you're implementing your plan. As you develop your plan, always make sure you're moving at a pace that's comfortable for you. Uh, you want to make sure that that momentum is continuous and that that planning process is kept there on the front burner and not placed on a shelf in uh, the back of your office, you know, on a bookcase. So phase one here is assess your current position. This is um, where you're going to uh, perform your research, uh, identify those opportunities and threats and customer, customer engagement options. You're going to be determining your internal strengths and weaknesses, and you're basically going to then be developing your SWOT um, and then developing uh, that so that you can later process it. Phase two here, we've got rediscovering or discovering your purpose in the desired future. Uh, that does involve determining what your mission and your vision, those values and your competitive advantages are based on the research that you uh, learned um, from pro, uh, phase one. Uh, third here, we've got developing your strategies and priorities, and you're going to be developing those, processing that SWOT, determining what your org-wide strategies and objectives are here, and then you're going to be determining what your short-term goals are in those key performance indicators. Um, this then moves on to phase four of cascading those strategies into operational items. You're going to be taking things down to the department and team member level. And then you've got your plan developed, and here in phase five, uh, you're going to need to make sure that you've got the right people, the right staff or volunteers, and the financial resources available so that you can actually execute against your plan. And then, of course, as I said before, phase six is the final phase of the process. Uh, you're going to be um, rolling it out to your organization and beginning the implementation of your strategic plan. So that is a brief overview of the process. Now this webinar, Strategic Planning 101, does focus primarily on uh, phases one through five. We do have an execution webinar that focuses exclusively on phase six, but the uh, setting strategic objectives webinar focuses on phases three and four. So let's go ahead and dig a little bit deeper and get into some of the details of each of the phases here. 
So first, again, we'll start off here with phase one, where we're going to be assessing our strategic position. Uh, this is going to take about half a month to get through, maybe a month. And uh, at the end, you're going to then have your prioritized list of focus areas. Uh, it is important to make sure that you note um, the importance of surveying your customers and your employees and getting their thoughts. Um, as I always say, they probably appreciate the attention in the long run, that you care about what they need, what they want, and they might give you the business um, based on uh, that care for them. Uh, make sure that you're listing out your external opportunities and your threats as well, and those internal strengths and weaknesses. So as long as you get a good base started, you can always build on your SWOT as you work through your strategic plan. But again, that base will give you some focus areas so you can develop some objectives from there. Uh, keep in mind always, strengths and weaknesses can be addressed, opportunities as well. Uh, threats cannot always be immediately addressed and uh, take, ad uh, taken care of. So make sure you keep those threats in mind as you work through your planning process and develop some types of goals that if a threat does come to fruition, that you've got a plan for how you're going to uh, deal with it, address it, and uh, overcome it. Phase two here, we've got um, discovering your purpose and your desired future. And uh, if you've already got a strategic plan, you're going to be rediscovering these things. Uh, this phase should take about two weeks to get through, and you will be coming up with your mission and your vision. Uh, now, your mission is plain and simple. It's basically, why do you exist? And then your vision statement, that one looks into the future, and it defines where you want to be in about three to five years or so. Um, these two pieces of the puzzle obviously are giving you that clear picture of your future, and they are going to be that foundation that's going to help you in developing that roadmap that's going to get you to that um, point B out in the future that you've set for your organization. Um, make sure you're not fighting over semantics, obviously. Uh, make sure that there's agreement amongst the group and that you're working out all the kinks. Um, identify any strategic issues that do need to be addressed. Very important there. Um, maybe in terms of um, uh, strategic issues that might uh, you might need to uh, deal with, uh, maybe you've got competitors that are um, uh, popping up, opening up shop down the street. Uh, you're an internet-based company, and there's lots of other options out there for the same product that you're selling. Um, how are you going to deal with that? Uh, maybe one of your client accounts for more than 40% of your total revenue. What would happen if you lost them? Always important to deal with that as well. How are you going to improve the quality of your output? Those are all types of strategic issues that you need to make sure that you are addressing. So as you do work through this phase, make sure you're keeping in mind um, that uh, you need a clear uh, scope and a picture of the future. Make sure you're avoiding confusion amongst the group. Uh, phase three here then, this is going to take about two weeks, and we're going to be developing our strategies and priorities. And we're going to be um, utilizing our SWOT. We're going to be determining our competitive advantages. Those are what we're best at. We're also going to be developing our organization-wide strategies. And those are the methods that we intend to use to reach our vision. Uh, we will also be uh, uh, developing our strategic objectives. And those are the long-term strategic focus areas. Uh, that we need to make sure that we keep an eye on or we focus on so that we can achieve our vision. Then we're going to be creating our short-term goals by converting those objectives set us above into specific performance targets. Those are going to be within, say, a one- to two-year time frame. Those goals are also going to state uh, what and when and who, and they're going to be measurable. And then at this point, you've been building on the first two phases of the planning process, 
pulling your plan together, and basically you're creating your flight plan and your flight deck as we see. And then lastly, you're going to be uh, identifying those key performance indicators, or your KPIs. Um, those are the quantifiable measures that show movement toward your goals. Um, obviously, as you work through this phase, make sure you're keeping an eye out for that pitfall of ambiguity and you're avoiding any haze. Make sure that you're con clearly defining all of these items that we just spoke of making sure that everyone in your organization or that's involved with the strategic plan is on that same page. And then that will help you reach that peak that much more efficiently. Uh, phase four here, this is where we're going to cascade our strategies to operations and we're going to be creating our department goals and those individual action items. Uh, potentially, you are a smaller company, you may not need this department level, and that's okay. Our system does work with large organizations where they may need the breakout on the department level and then the team member level underneath those departments. Or if you're a smaller organization or group, our system can also work with a two-tier system, one individual heading up the strategic plan, and then team members underneath that individual uh, performing all the tasks. So when I do speak of the department level, you may not actually have that with your plan and that's okay. If you do have any questions about what level you should have, uh, feel free to give our office a call and we're happy to chat with you about that as we want to make sure it gets set up correctly from the beginning so that you have a nice smooth strategic management process. Uh, this phase four should take about four to six weeks to get through, and at the end, you should know who is doing what and by when. Uh, if you don't know uh, answers to those questions of who was doing what and by when, make sure you go back, look at those goals again that you've set, and make sure that that information is um, uh, set by or set with those goals so that you do have that understanding of who is doing what and by when so that there's actually the accountability and um, the responsibility and the time frames um, associated with each goal. Um, again, we also do have our setting strategic objectives webinar in case you do need a little more um, assistance uh, or education on this part of the phase or planning process. Uh, phase five here then, this is where we're going to be working, um, making sure that we're aligning our people and our financial resources with our plan. We need to make sure that we've got the right people in the right seats and that we're utilizing their skill sets to the uh, best of our ability so that they're efficient uh, individuals. Uh, you need to also make sure that you've got the right financial resources necessary to make your plan work. As I always say in my example, maybe in your strategic plan you've developed, you want to increase revenue, uh, maybe customer base, and you've determined that you need to hire someone to conduct some sales for your group. That's great, but can your budget afford that new staff member? Make sure that you're um, uh, keeping that in mind as you work through this alignment phase. A rollout as well. Uh, when and how are you going to communicate the plan? Make sure you're uh, keeping that uh, in mind and putting a, um, some pen to paper on this, um, this piece of it. So um, then we'll move on here to phase uh, six. And this is where we're going to begin executing our plan. Uh, this phase, as I said before, it is going to be ongoing throughout the rest of the year. Um, you're going to be having either monthly or quarterly check-ins. Uh, you're going to be reviewing your strategy. You're going to be getting into your um, plan and updating it, maybe be modifying it if um, necessary. Make sure you're avoiding the pitfall of your plan not reflecting reality. Obviously, if it doesn't, you're never going to reach your goal. So before I hop into our system, I do want to uh, point out this slide here. 
as you may be familiar with our logo. This is um, uh, a little bit about our logo. So we'll start here just here in the center. But, um, we always um, start off with reviewing your core. And as we work through then, we're going to be developing our strategy throughout the process. Then we'll move along here. So we get here, we start translating our strategy. Then at this point, we start aligning our resources. So as you can see, we're kind of working through the various phases of the uh, management process. At this point, we start implementing our strategy. And then at this point, we assess our strategic position. So, um, and then we start moving it around um, back through. So as you can see, it's a very fluid and continuous motion um, the strategic management process is. So let's go ahead. I'm going to jump into the system and show you some tips and tricks uh, with my strategic plan. And I will share Uh, here we are at um, our My Strategic Plan um, system. This is a plan that is fully inputted into the system. So as a new user, uh, you will be seeing some vertical tiles here. Um, and those are some guidelines to helping you develop your strategic plan and getting it inputted into the system. So once your plan is in the system, you will see this performance uh, management section here. And this is our progress scorecard. And it does list out our uh, organization level goals, how many at this level are either completed on target, maybe not on target or past due if there's no status, and then also goals at the department level. And depending on how you're logged into the plan, uh, if you're a team member, you will also see uh, the respective team members' uh, list of their goals here as well. Um, here on our home page, we do have some additional information that you can utilize. Uh, we've got our list of our upcoming training. So if you're ever um, in working in the system and want to uh, learn about execution before you get to that phase, um, you can get, get that ex information here. These are some quick links if you want to get in and add or edit your goals, if you want to track progress against your goals or view and print reports. You can use those as well. Um, here is our account section. I will look at this briefly here. As a plan administrator, this page will be important to you. If you have your team members and departments uh, purchased, this is where you will activate those users. And then here, just to do a drop down, this is where you can actually manage um, those users change any details on them. Here is where you can customize the terms within the system. Maybe you are a company instead of an organization, or maybe you are a division instead of a department. Feel free to change this information here. I'll show you in a few, uh, few minutes about our uh, balance scorecard, but if you um, do wish to change the ordering or the uh, naming of these four areas of the balance scorecard. This is where you can do that as well. And obviously the save button. Uh, billing information here. As plan administrator, if you wish to add either departments or team members, this is where you can do that and update your subscription. Your company logo can be uploaded into the system. The format does work with our uh, strategy review PowerPoint, and the large format will work with all the rest of the following or other reports. We do have a communication option available to um, our customers if you would like our system to save you the time. Uh, we can send out uh, welcome emails to your departments or team members, and you can either pick or choose maybe do all departments if you want to roll it out to everybody at the same time. Uh, you can also personalize those welcome emails. And then also, our system does work with um, strategy alerts, again, saving your plan administrators 
uh, the time and uh, remembering, needing to remember when to get those out. You can have this set automatically. These emails can be set either weekly, specific day of the week, maybe monthly. You can change it to maybe say the tenth of the, maybe say the fifth of the month. As your personal greeting here is to update your goals and actions by the tenth of the month. So always a good option for, that you can take advantage of so that the system does the work for you. And to get into our system here, we'll start here with Determine Current Position. This is um, the phase one of our planning process. Uh, this is where you can, here you can do your internal and external analysis, and here's where you will enter into the system your SWOT. At all, at any time, if you are in need of some additional information, we do have these more info uh, buttons that you can click on and access. Uh, additional examples, resources, worksheets, videos, respective to that specific uh, element that you're working within your plan. Develop strategy here. This would be then phase two. We'll start here with mission at the top. And we've got uh, mission, vision, your values, competitive, competitive advantages, and such here. This is, again, an overview of the subject, maybe some questions that you should be answering. And then this is where you can enter in your information. And again, always click Save. Again, same with Vision. Then we'll move on here to setting goals and objectives. We now have a linear view, which is great for tablets and mobile devices. I'll start off here showing you the classic view. As you can see here, we've got the four areas of the balance scorecard, which was developed by Norton and Kaplan. And as you can see here, we've got a guideline for the uh, cascading of the various levels of the goals. So as you can see here, in goal number 11, as we expand on each of these levels, here is our long-term strategic objective. It is not assigned, it's far-reaching, about three to five years out. Underneath that, this is where we set our organizational goal. Maybe uh, it might just be a corporate-wide goal, if we're just going to have a corporate-wide plan. Next, we've got third level is our department goal, or maybe it's a corporate action item, if you're going to have a uh, base plan. And then next, we've got the fourth level of the team member goal, and then the team member action item here at the fifth level. And that all corresponds here to this guideline. So as you're developing your goals, keep this uh, guideline in um, mind. As you can see here, these goals can be assigned. And so you can actually see a goal, which I'll follow through with. Uh, we've got a... A uh, long-term strategic objective here of growing our revenue by 30% each year. Under that, we've got uh, a organizational level goal of generate sales of $1 million by the end of the year. Uh, we get our information for that goal from QuickBooks. It is assigned to the administration department to manage, and the due date then is 12-31-13. In order to achieve that goal, though, we have three department-level goals here, um, ranging from um, generating $300,000 in software licenses with the administration department managing it, uh, maintaining contracts, or, um, excuse me, generating maintenance contracts, to even developing $200,000 in web design consulting professional consulting services. So as you can see, that's um, three department goals that actually support a org level goal that supports a strategic objective. Now to briefly look here at the linear view, um, just to go back here real quick, if you do choose to at this point 
um, add in and equal where you see the add, edit, or delete, this is where you can actually enter in a action item to support this third level goal. So this would end up being a fourth level goal here. Here's where you can assign it. If there was a team member you put into it, priority and cost, what your measure is going to be, any target, whether you want the function to be a sum of numbers in terms of uh, revenue growth, an average in terms of maybe uh, customers or profit margin, highest or lowest number, or even a current number. Maybe you're tracking your current number of monthly employ uh, excuse me, um, monthly customers. Here are some hints as well when developing your goals. Keep those in mind as well. So I'll now go to the linear view and show you this option. Uh, again, this option is great for tablets and mobile devices. Here are the various levels of the goal cascading. And as we click on the respective level, you can see the uh, parent goal above it at the uh, organization level. And then this would be the department level. You can add new department goals by clicking on this uh, uh, button here, link. You can also click on any of the arrows to get to the next level, and this is where you'd be entering in your team member goals. You can enter in your item there. Again, assign a department, assign a team member, your start and end date. Again, short-term goals might be on 30, 60, 90-day uh, strategic objectives. They're going to be longer. A measure may be percent complete. Your target may be 100%. Maybe you're looking at uh, a dollars in revenue and your target is a million dollars. You can choose, obviously, currency better. Now, if you're going to be setting a, a key performance indicator, we encourage you to then complete the rest of this details here, uh, what the function is going to be. If you're tracking revenue on a monthly basis, you're going to obviously track it on a sum. You can also track, as I said, profit margins for average, highest or lowest number, current. Priority level here, high priority goals are in red on reports. And um, that will basically then complete the rest of your goal um, details. So, and always click Save. So as you can see here, you can expand any of these areas accordingly. You can also click the Back button as well. If you want to set KPIs, this is where you will be doing those, obviously. And this is where you will have your respective level of key performance indicator options. And so you will just check mark any of the ones that you do want to track as a KPI. Uh, you can reorder goals from this area. One option under the linear view for reordering goals is to check if you You've got this. If we want the maintenance contracts to be first, it um, obviously then updates the numbering of the goals. Maybe we want to uh, change our mind and we actually want the software licenses first. So that's an easy way to reorder goals under the linear view. Then let's move on here to track performance. And we'll start here with track my progress. This is the page that you'll be um, going to quite often as you're executing against your strategic plan. You can see here we've got the various types of goals listed here, key performance indicators or stoplight status goals. Priority level, the goals themselves, who's responsible, the target, percent complete year to date, due date, when the goal was last updated, as well as the current status of the goal. 
a new option here is you can filter these goals. Say we want only department goals that are complete. Hit the Submit button so it comes up with our specific list of the two goals that are complete. Maybe we want to determine which goals um, are not on target so that we can address those issues and why they're not on target. And so we know administration is responsible for this goal. We need to check in with them and determine why this goal is not on target. You can also then print this list from here. It will print as it currently is in view. You can also sort these goals. Maybe you want to know all the high priority goals that are not complete or not on target. Maybe you just want to know which are the key performance indicators up top and then the following goals underneath. Maybe you want to sort by department or maybe you want to sort by due date as well. That's an option. So a lot of sorting and filtering options on this page. So as you can see, again, uh, it does list all the uh, various goals. And this gives you a, a great view for looking at your plan to determine the uh, status of where things are and what needs to be addressed. Uh, you can update goals from here. Click on the type and you can set status, which is a new option here for key performance indicators. If you've got a, a revenue goal and you want to mark whether you're, um, you know, it's not on target, maybe you're in progress with that goal, you're hitting your monthly targets for your revenue, then that's great. You can enter in comments here. You can also update the percent complete for the year to date. Always click Save. Uh, comments do appear on this page. Unfortunately, I do not. There are no goals with comments here, but I'll show you those in a minute. Um, in addition, um, you can update stoplight status goals that are being set um, based on a milestone status, what the status is at that, per, at that, um, par, that uh, snapshot in time, and again, any comments. You can also update key performance indicators here using our scorecard. This page here is where you can set targets if you've got a million dollar goal that you want to track on a monthly basis and seasonality plays into your organization, then uh, this is where you can set those monthly targets. Then if you want to track uh, revenue against, just to show you here, let's say we had 100,000. You can see how our year-to-date figure here has been updated, so it is tracking on a sum. Uh, numbers here are then tracking on an average. Uh, numbers here are tracking on um, highest number, I do believe. And say this um, is uh, tracking on an average. So this is where you will actually, sit, um, that function does play into the goal. Next we'll move on here to view reports. After you've updated your plan status, I'll pull a few HTML options here. We'll do executive summary with progress. This is a great report that we utilize when hosting our strategy review meetings with our team. Provides all the details of the strategic plan. Gets into a progress at a glance. Again, any goals in red are high priority goals. So you can see here status, as well as the milestone status, and if it's a key performance indicator, uh, the status variance based on your target versus actual. Further down here, you get into the progress detail. 
and then those goals here are broken out by the four respective uh, areas of the organization. So it's a great option for, again, your strategy review meeting. Uh, you can actually also do department or team member level goals. Let's look at the action plan here for Joanne Rogers. This is a great report that we encourage users to um, pull when they are going into the, their own strategy review meeting. So on an individual basis, uh, each team member can report out on the status of their specific goals. We also have here at this organization level, this is our strategy review PowerPoint presentation, which is a new option for users. Great option for um, having a template set in place. Title slide provides an agenda, an order of presenters, and then it gets into the uh, status of the various goals at the organization level, then starts on department level. So at any point you can actually then see the status is here of the goal. This uh, option does also present a focus for next quarter for uh, departments or individuals, and this is obviously then based on um, the time uh, the start and end dates that you've set for goals. And uh, this report also does provide um, wrap up and next step slide as well. So a great option for a nice, um, easy and efficient uh, strategy review meeting as well. Another option is the um, uh, dashboard. This is an add-on that you can um, have with your plan. And it's great, again, for putting up on a, um, a projector showing to a larger group. It does break out the goals by the four um, areas. If you do want to look at goals, financial goals here. You can see how they cascade down. Click on any of the uh, details there and you'll get the status of the goal with the following or prior two months and the current month as well as year to date and how you're tracking. You can also filter or if you want performance. These are all these uh, uh, goals here. Click on any of those and you get the gauge for a quick report out. Again, you can filter by department. These are all goals for the administration department. So another wonderful option for your strategy review meeting. Uh, just to show you here how it does cascade down. It goes through all goals. So a really good option. Um, just to look real quick here at the help and support sector. This is where you can find the complete virtual strategy guide. Here, you can click on that and access any of the various phases. Say I'm developing my strategies, I want more information on how to do that, how to process our SWOT. And it's got a lot of details with regard to that phase. So a great opportunity to uh, learn more about um, the, uh, the elements that you're working with in your strategic plan in developing a nice successful plan. Uh, we do have a list of our strategic planning services. If you're in need of some additional assistance, this is where you can find more details on those. 
a list of our upcoming trainings, latest articles and blogs. We also have a large archive uh, section for you to peruse, latest videos, all of our newsletters and such, um, additional tools, as well as any books that might uh, interest you as well, and a list of our frequently asked questions. So I will go ahead and uh, move on out to our presentation. So just to wrap up a few things here, as you venture into your strategic management and development process, uh, make sure you have the right plan structure. If you are a large organization, maybe a smaller one, do you need two-tier or a three-tier system? If you have any questions, please let us know and we're happy to walk you through um, the various options and what would probably work best for you based on the conversation. Uh, make sure you're customizing your plan to your organization. Use that Customize Terms section so that uh, you can make your plan fit your organization and your group or uh, team members. You don't need to learn a new verbiage or nomenclature. Our business report card is available in our tools section. It's a great option that can help you identify uh, focus areas for your organization and um, help you jumpstart your strategic development process. So please check that out. It is uh, free to users. Um, identify and commit to your ideal schedule and timeline. Make sure you're putting uh, your meeting dates, uh, quarterly strategy review meetings, department review meetings and such on a schedule or calendar so that uh, time off and um, can be uh, scheduled accordingly and people know what their deadlines are. And also taking advantage of all of our resources and trainings on that help and support section so that you can uh, learn as much as you can about strategic planning or as much as you need to. And uh, if we are always available for questions as well, please uh, let us know.